Chip budding is one of the primary grafting methods used for asexual propagation to produce named cultivars or clones of many fruit trees. In this case, a bud rather than a shoot is attached to the rootstock. A bud on a thin strip of wood complete with bark is inserted in a matching notch on the rootstock to make a new plant. Hi, Raymond Deer from Best Fruits in Jamaica, where I post videos on methods to improve the production of various locally grown crops. If you are watching my video for the first time and find it beneficial in any way, then please consider subscribing to the channel. In this video, I will be discussing how to bud or graft an avocado seedling using a chip bud. Chip budding is one of the two most popular budding systems used in nursery production and is the only budding system that can be done on rootstock that have either active or dormant vascular cambium. This method of propagation is not very popular with avocado grafting. It is however important in that in situations where cyan materials are limited, then this method can be maximized by using small quantities of cyan material to get a lot more plants as each bud on the cyan wood is a potential plant. For successful chip budding, you must have the following. One, a mature avocado bud that is just about to grow out to suitable sized rootstock, commonly referred to as stock, which could be dormant or actively growing. Three, sharp grafting or budding knife. And four, proper wrapping material, inclusive of grafting tape for protecting the bud. The process of stock and cyan selection are similar to those for the regular methods of avocado grafting. If you have been watching my videos, then you would have seen how stocks and cyans are selected. However, if you are new to this channel and avocado grafting, then please watch my video titled Watch This and your next avocado graph could be like this. That video covers all the basic preparations for grafting avocados. You will find the link to it below. Having identified the stock and cyan, we begin the process by first sterilizing the tools to be used in the procedures. Buds of the desired variety or cultivar that are about to break dormancy are first selected. A suitable stock is next selected and the point where the chipboard will be attached is carefully chosen. I normally start by cutting the designated area on the stock that is the point that is judged most suitable for receiving the chip bud. In the tropics where it is hot on most days, preparing the stock first and chip bud last is recommended as this will prevent moisture loss or dehydration of the very thin chip bud as the longer the time after cutting and tying, the greater will be the moisture loss. From the cyan material, select a suitable bud that you believe is just about to break dormancy. You can place the cyan material beside the cut stock and get an approximate length of the chip bud that is to be cut. The cyan can be cut either by starting at the upper internode, then cutting through the node, and finally the bottom of the chip. The lower section of the bud is recommended to be cut at a 45 degree angle and at a depth much more than the thickness of the desired chip. Alternatively, we could cut the angle first, then cut from the upper internode down, ending at the 45 degree angle. The chip bud should be cut with the same thickness, length and angle as the piece that was removed from the prepared notch of the rootstock. 
After the chipboard is cut, it is then removed, followed by careful sliding of it in the slot or notch cut in the rootstock. If the slot is too short, the length can be increased either at the base or at the top of the cut. If the slot is not wide enough, you can make the necessary adjustment on it so it can receive the chipboard. However, if the bud is too short to the extent that it will not fit properly, then make sure that the cambium of one side of both stock and cyan matches up by touching each other. After placing the chip bud in the slot so that it fits as perfectly as possible, it is then securely tied with grafting tape. I have had excellent results using a piece of 0.25 inch or 6.4 millimeter with grafting tape to tie the strip bud, making sure that the bud is never covered. The tape does not have to be overlapped along its entire length in a situation where the bud will be covered with plastic. If plastic will not be used, alternatively, you could use a piece of Ordinary half inch or 1.27 cm with grafting tape to tie the chip leaving the bud uncovered or covered. If the bud is covered with the grafting tape, you will have to slit the tape over the bud after 3 to 4 weeks to allow the bud to grow out. You can also use wax tape or body tape to tie it in which case the bud will be covered with complete overlapping of the tape over the chip bud. In very hot conditions like what is experienced in the tropics, even in the winter months, the possibilities exist of desiccation or drying out of the bud if left uncovered as daily temperatures only slightly differ from those which we experience during the hot summer months. A small tree inch by 7 inch or 7.6 cm times 17.8 cm plastic bag usually a recycled one that was opened by cutting the seal to the bottom and one of the side is then used to wrap around the grafted chip pod, preferably two to three times, forming an enclosed space surrounding the budded area of the stock with an approximate diameter of about one inch or 2.5 centimeter. If the area is too large, then too much air and humidity could accumulate inside the space which could result in excess heat buildup which most times might lead to death of the bud. The top of the wrapped plastic is securely tied with a piece of half inch grafting tape to prevent any moisture and humidity loss from the top. However, the bottom is loosely tied to accommodate some heat loss from the bag on extremely hot days. After grafting, remove all visible apical, auxiliary and adventitious buds from the rootstock since if any are allowed to grow from the stock, it could result in a slow growing bud which could eventually starve to death. The leaves above and below the grafted bud are left in place to ensure that sap movement from the root to the top of the plant is continued as this will also promote photosynthesis thus providing food for the grafted bud to grow out. After the bud germinate, the leaves are allowed to remain in place for a while. Growth of the chip bud at first is slow as the stock will still continue its effort to grow out new buds in its attempt to try and kill the grafted bud even at this stage and beyond. Adventitious buds will continue to appear on the stock and sometimes even from the root area, which, if not removed and allowed to grow, will eventually kill the chip bud. After the grafted bud has grown about 4 to 6 inches, the leaves from the stock can be removed. At this point, most of the vascular material are being transported to the grafted bud. We should continue to monitor the graft and remove all new buds growing directly from the stock. 
I usually allow the upper portion of the stock to remain as long as it is green. However, after it starts showing signs of dying at the top, which is indication that the plant is withdrawing nutrients from it and redistributing it to the grafted bud, it is usually removed. It also signifies that the growing bud is now an aggressive shoot on the stock. The extension of the stock above the grafted bud is usually removed, leaving about a quarter of an inch or 6 mm above the upper portion of the grafted chip that contain the bud. Some pruning seal, preferably wax, can be used to cover over the cut to prevent fungal infestation or it can be left as is. A piece of old tape is then used to give a single tie below the cut area. In addition, a stake is used to provide added support for the growing scion. After buds have stopped appearing on the stock, which is an indication that the stock has accepted the grafted bud as its dominant shoot, at this phase, the budded plant can now be planted in the field or sold. If you have been aided by this video, then please subscribe to the channel. If you have not done so before, leave a comment, share the video with your friends who have similar interests in this area, and click on the notification bell so you will be informed when another video is posted, as my next video could be much more enlightening than this one. Thank you for watching. Until the next time, take care of yourself, others, and please don't forget me.